Hi, my name is Robert Dixon, and I'm doing my presentation on the Incident Response Report, or IRR for short. All right, so the agenda for this evening is, first, I'm going to be going over the definition of the Incident Response Report, what it is, what it encompasses, and why it's important. Secondly, I'm going to be going over the various steps included in this type of report, and just examples of them. And lastly, I'm going to be giving you guys a brief explanation of why this report is so important to businesses and key to uh, a business still being active and being productive in and after the event of a cyber attack or cyber incident. All right, so to start us off, we're gonna be defining the incident response report. So a brief definition of the incident response report is just a set of rules and procedures that the designated response staff follows in order to minimize and mitigate a um, cyber attack or cyber incident. The purpose for this report is to, like I said, basically minimize um, the loss, uh, the cost of a cyber attack and the loss of assets during a cyber attack. And then in the future prevent certain cyber attacks like ones that have occurred from happening again. All right, so the steps in the incident response report. There are gonna be four phases or steps involved in them, which are preparation, detection, detection and analysis, containment, eradication and discovery or recovery, and post-incident activity. These steps are defined by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. But for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to be splitting up the third step, uh, containment, eradication and discovery into two, which is gonna be just containment, eradication and recovery, just to help the information flow a bit more and then give you guys some more background information on the recovery step, which is, in my opinion, one of the most key steps there. All right, the first step or first phase is preparation. It includes setting up a reasonable set of defense controls based, uh, based on threats, just like firewalls, um, password protected things, two factor authentications for certain secure information. Um, obtaining the, ne the necessary resources in order for uh, us, for the company to be able to combat a particular attack. And just in general, it involves the, um, the creation of incident response policies and other procedures and focuses on preparing IT staff and the designated response staff to handle potential cyber incidents should they arise. Phase two, or the second step, is going to be detection and analysis. And pretty much it determines whether an incident has occurred as well as the type, extent, and magnitude of such incident. Like say, there's a Trojan horse that invades a program. Um, some Trojan horses to a company, it could be minuscule. It really may just take some not as sensitive confidential information that would stop businesses, but that would stop a business's production. But on the other hand, there are some cyber attacks like spyware that could totally compromise data and the use of that and could not only hurt the company, but could hurt other people's trust in said company. The second step encompasses everything from frequent port scanning, uh, monitoring potential attack vectors, looking for signs of an incident to prioritizing certain procedures when an event actually occurs. So it goes from all right, we're gonna look for a proceed. We're gonna look for an event if it happens. We're gonna make sure it doesn't happen. But if it does, we're gonna look for signs of an incident if it happens. And then after, okay, we're gonna prioritize who's doing what and what systems you know gonna be active in such when an event happens to further minimize the incident. Um, there we go. There we go. Yeah. All right, the third step is containment and eradication. This step, uh, severs affected communication, stuff involved in it is um, things that like sever affected communication circuits, disable or delete compromised accounts, reconfigure firewalls, pretty much rebuild a system from the bottom up in order to help prevent any further damage. Um, and just like cut off and isolate certain otherwise compromised systems. Um, 
So for the third step, in on one hand it involves limiting damages of the incident and isolating all compromised assets like hardware or just computers that are just being totally compromised to the point where they cannot be used to help the situation. Um, and if they are used, it just be used to pretty much spread the damage of the incident. And on the other hand, it involves finding the core cause of a cyber attack or incident and ultimately eliminating it or significantly minimizing it to the point where it is manageable and can be out of a out of a system in just a couple of hours or isn't really considered a threat anymore. The fourth step that would normally be considered the third step is part, well, part of the third step is going to be recovery and it involves addressing safeguards, restoring data via backups, um, changing authorized codes, changing passwords, maybe even going to the point where looking at the accessibility of certain data to certain users. Um, and restoring integrity and, and confident and confidentiality of data. The fourth step um, pretty much involves res resolving previously exploited vulnerabilities in the system and recreating a productive environment where no other threats remain. And that's not only for a system, that's only from a technological point of view, that's also from a business point of view and a social point of view. Um, recovery also comes from, okay, we're gonna restore uh, not only the system, but the, or maybe our consumers and the staff's confidence in the security of data, of their data possibly, or of certain sensitive data, period. All right. And the last step is uh, the incident response support or the post, post incident response support. And that's pretty much just reviewing the documented data recorded during the recovery because during this whole process, we're supposed to record every single step um, for purposes that I'll get into later. Um, they evaluate the response of specific staff during the incident to make sure, okay, what is everyone doing what they're supposed to be doing or not? And they identify monetary and other losses, such as like if, um, like I said, the first example, the Trojan horse, Trojan horse evades, it's a very malicious program. Uh, and because of it, it compromises tons and tons of uh, consumers' bank information, causing a loss for the company and uh, the consumers. They have to record that and keep track of that for legal means as well as just for consumer means. And other assets being um, just maybe even hardware, uh, software uh, as well. That's software because you might have to back up that software or may have, maybe have to patch that software to make it more, um, I mean, less vulnerable for uh, a, a, a hacker to access. But um, it's this step is just a completion of incident documentation, like I was just saying, in case of legal means, like you might have to present certain things in court to prove that, okay, this is what we lost or this is what happened, this is how we tried to mitigate it. It wasn't just uh, something that happened. And it talks, and it's just a pretty much a pep, like a, okay, what happened in this incident and how can we improve upon what happened? How can we better the response, uh, minimize the loss of data, loss of uh, uh, morale and so, and so on and so forth. And how can we make sure this doesn't happen in the future? All right. So lastly, this is gonna be a quick summary of my presentation. So here are the, uh, the four or five steps. Preparation, detection, analysis, containment, and eradication, recovery, um, and post-incident activity. So the overview, like I said, is gonna be without an incident response plan in place. It, oh, well, it goes over the basic summary of the presentation, the summary of why the incident response report is so important and so key to a business in regarding, regarding its um, ability to significantly minimize and decrease loss of assets and um, the cost of a cyber attack. Because if you're not prepared for it, it would be extremely costly. And I said, without an incident response plan in place, an, organiz an organization may not detect the attack or it may not follow proper, uh, or it might not be followed properly. So in conclusion, oh, give me one second.
So in conclusion, an incident response report is a crucial component that runs a business. Many companies rely on the use of sensitive data and sensitive information that if otherwise compromised uh, could greatly affect the business's production and people's trust in said business. Like for instance, if a bank, a, a bank got hacked into, a bank system got hacked into, I wouldn't want to put my money in there, number one. And they, it would be a little hard for them to continue and start and, you know, continue with their business after the event of the attack. And so given that many companies rely on the use of sensitive data uh, and the use of the day-to-day -day procedures, it could, an uh, incident response report could help minimize it. Without an incident response plan in place, an organization may not detect the threat of a cyber attack and therefore not only more not only will more assets be lost like i said um they might not even it would take a long it would take longer for them to recover from uh such an attack or recover from it at all period because if you don't have a plan in place and the malware is that vicious you you may just be comp your whole system might just be compromised and you might have nothing no way to combat that at all Uh, this is my work cited page. I use three sources. Um, but in conclusion, uh, that's an incident response report. That's a summary of it. We went over the definition, the various steps included in it, some, some brief examples of what those steps encompass. Uh, preparation um, is like uh, just getting the in making instant, instant response policies uh, and just cr the creation of an instant response report. Um, and it goes all the way down the post incident recovery where it comes from, okay, how did this, how did the report we, we, uh, we wrote up and we put in effect in the first step for preparation, how did it work out? And does it need to be changed? Does it need to be altered a little bit? This is that in the third. And, you know, hope you guys liked it. And that's my presentation. Thank you.